You know, I always like to start with something funny about technology. Elon Musk, of course, you know, he runs Tesla, but his title is not CEO of Tesla. His exact title is Techno King. So when he signs things, he signs it as the Techno King. And his finance officer is known as the Master of Coin, right? Which he says is comes from the Game of Thrones. Um, I mean, the Tesla founder, of course, Elon Musk, he, you know, he's originally from South Africa, which is kind of strange because you'd think that he was from Madagascar. <laughs> oh, I know that was really bad. Hey, welcome to Tech Refresh. It's your weekly fun show about all things digital. And just a quick reminder to rate, review, follow, subscribe this podcast wherever you get it. And of course, joining us is Allie. She's our amazing content queen and our crypto princess. And Allie, what are you bringing to the table today? I have some potentially very good news for our privacy and some fixes for what I think is the most obnoxious smart speaker issue. Ever. Ever. <laughs> Ever. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, with Matthew Heffel's here. He's our magnificent millennial and the star of our Commando TikTok channel. Hello there, hey. Matt. What's hey. on board? We'll be talking about how universal chargers may be a thing in the future, as well as an amazing PC and Mac tip and some Kim Kardashian drama. So, like, everything's just amazing in your world, Matt? Oh, is that it? <laughs> just like Alex. She's our amazing content queen. Yeah. All right. Let's get started with the tech news. And I'm going to start with a story about Google. Now, of course, Google's parent company is Alphabet. Now, how do you think Google makes most of its money? Anybody? Anybody? Ads. Ads? Yes. <laughs> advertising. That's right. Uh, in 2020, Google made $147 billion in revenue for advertising alone. Oh. Okay. Isn't that crazy? Now, back in 1997, I don't know if you remember this, but that's when Google actually launched Search. That was their first tool. And it was really something monumental. I mean, I remember going there going like, wow, this is phenomenal. This is great. And Google has a ton of competition now. I'm not talking about Bing because nobody really ever talks about <laughs> Bing. I know. Bing is so bad that Microsoft has to pay you to use it with gift cards, but that's a whole other <laughs> issue. But Google's competition is Facebook and Amazon, of course, because this way you can buy more targeted ads. And so now what has Google done? Well, they say, okay, well, we don't want to lose money, so we're going to start selling ads too. And so that's why when you search for anything at Google, you see all the ads at the top, right? Sometimes four to six before you see any search results. So now when you want to look for something on Google, it kind of feels old, doesn't it? It's mm -hmm. not as sleek and fresh. And it actually happened to me the other day. I couldn't find exactly what I was looking for, so I used a clever search trick, okay? And the Atlantic Magazine, they have this whole report about Google's search engine decay, how it's so bad that ads are just jam-packed. And then, of course, you know, they tried to give you the answer, okay? So if you Google something, that they give you an answer. But then if you look at the answer, you might find that the answer is like 10 years old, <laughs> yeah. all right? So you're like, okay, well, this was a complete waste of my time. So what I'm doing, what a lot of other people are doing, is that when you want to look for something on Google, you use the word Reddit with it. Right. So that this way you can find the answer on Reddit instead of going through all of Google's search results. So Google is dying. I mean, I never thought that I would ever say that. Right. I mean, <laughs> Google is dying. And people are moving on to this. Electric bike rental, Santa Barbara. Do you search like that or you actually type in a question? I still do what you do. I kind of do it the way we used to where it's like very robotic almost. Yes. Yeah, I but, do it the same way. But I know a lot of people do that more natural search, especially oh. her voice stuff. Oh, you know, Andrew Rabinsky, he used to be with the show, and I still talk to him from time to time. And uh, he will actually type in a sentence or a question like, where can I find electric bikes to rent in Santa Barbara? I know. So funny. You know, maybe it is time to give Bing a shot. Mm, okay, it's not that bad yet. No, not that bad yet. All right, Matt, what are you going to talk to us about? Well, Recently, the European Union had this whole thing where they were trying to get everybody to get universal chargers. So we all have that bucket of chargers in our house or that drawer that's just filled to the brim with old chargers that you're too afraid to throw out because you never know, right? You never know. Well, what if all your devices, what if your smartphone and your tablet could all be charged with the same cord? Right? That would be amazing. <laughs> the European Union just passed this bill. It, by 2024, all these big tech companies will have to have all their smartphones and tablets on the USB-C charger. They will all wow. have to be that same charger. So with this happening, a whole bunch of uh, senators in the U.S. Senate were trying to see if they can get something similar passed here. 
So do you think this will be the reality? Do you think that we will be able to get this done here in the United States? Or do you think we'll be the odd ones out and not do it? I hope that we get it. I mean, I'm so tired of like, you know, and it happened. It actually happened to me today. Okay. <laughs> I picked out of the drawer, the kitchen drawer. Yes, I have trouble saying that because I'm from New Jersey. And I really want to say drawer. <laughs> I can't help it. So anytime I have to say drawer, I get this like this weird thing happens to my mouth. But I pulled out the USB lighter. Okay. And I noticed that I was going to light a candle, make the kitchen smell nice. And it's out of a charge. And then I pulled out. I'm like, oh, I wonder if this charger works. And it was for Barry's iPhone. No. Mm -hmm. Doesn't. No. That, that doesn't fit. No. Yeah. yeah so, That's yeah. so funny. That's one of mine, too. Most of my stuff is to USB-C now. But yes, my electric lighters, I have two of them, and both of them are mini USB. It's so annoying. Yes, it is yeah. so annoying. Right. Yes. It's well, awful. The, the internet is speculating that this will happen no matter what because of the money involved with these companies having to change out all of the ports and all of these devices. The likelihood that because Europe does it and it will be possible that then it will fall down like dominoes and the rest of the world will fall fall in line. Well, so. and I'm sure they'll be excited to sell us the new branded USB-C sure. for yeah. their products. <laughs> yeah, you're going to need it. Of course, you're yeah. going to need it. I mean, then, you know, Apple, well, you know, they're not including the chargers anymore anyway in the box. Right. I mean, exactly. That's the other thing is they're not including the chargers. So you just get this cord and you're like, oh, no, what do I do with that? <laughs> <laughs> I do have a drawer full of those little Apple bricks. <laughs> yeah, also. Yeah, yeah. Those are nice. Those mm -hmm. are nice. So, Allie, you're also getting a little into the politics here, right? I am. But first, be careful next time you're out fishing in a national park, not like hacker fishing, actual fishing pole fishing, because there's a federal law that prohibits washing a fish anywhere but a designated fish washing station. Wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh-huh. Fish <laughs> okay. washing station. These are a real thing. Uh, there's a net, another federal law that criminalizes the sale of onion rings made from diced onions well, instead onion. of rings. Okay. Okay. I, you know, I never thought of that, but now that you mention it, I only see onion rings with full onions in there, and now I know yeah. why. Now you know why. Uh, you know what? There's not a federal law for the buying and selling of some of our most private data. For now, maybe there's something proposed called the Health and Location Data Protection Act, and it would actually stop those scummy data brokers from selling and transferring your location data and your health data. Oh, nice. Data brokers, of course, are those companies that scrape every possible online source to gather as much information about you as possible. Your phone number, everywhere you've ever lived, your relatives, your job history, your credit score, your medical history. They compile that and they sell it to anyone willing to pay for it. There's a lot that you can see for free, too. I'm sure you two have looked yourselves up online at one point or another. Yes. I did. Just yesterday, I was looking on that People Search Finder and I, it had my phone number. It still had an old, old address, but... It was kind of weird. You know, it's it's very creepy because, yeah. you know, I, I've told you guys this story that, you know, Ian, when he moved to Los Angeles, he's like, hey, mom, you know, where did you live in L.A.? On Lynbrook in Westwood. I mean, and I because I said that was the street I lived on. And he's like, where, what, where exactly was the, the apartment mm -hmm. complex? I'm, I, you know, I just don't remember. And that was the end of it. Like about 10 minutes later, he texts me. Oh, here it is. Because oh, <laughs> <laughs> he found it on a people search site. <laughs> Well, little warning if you're going to go look up yourself or anyone else. Uh, these sites are really tricky, and they pull out every trick in the book to try to get you, one, to get them more, give them more information, and then, two, to try to sell you a subscription to get all the rest of the info. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> I actually think it's really clever. When you search for someone on a lot of these sites, they'll ask you questions while the report is loading that's like, did Kim ever live here? Did, does Kim know this person? And that's just them getting even more data, right, to refine it, their results. Or what they do is they show you, like, like this magnifying glass, and it's spinning around and around. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, we're compiling the data right now. Yeah. Yeah. We're coming into every nook and cranny. Checking police records. Yeah. Checking yeah. government records. Yes. And you're like, oh, my okay. God. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's all very annoying. Don't pay for that. Well, it's not illegal for these sites to operate, to sell your info, to collect everything they can. But that could change with this bill. There are still lots of hurdles to get through. It would take a while. Um, but it sure does seem nice to limit these companies that solely exist just to collect and sell information on us. Uh, it's not the only proposal out there. There's another one that would allow you to opt out of targeted ads and to even sue companies that improperly sell your data. So Ooh, we'll see. That would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. In the meantime, it is your job to get your information off of these sites. They make it tricky to opt out. We all know that. There's a lot of steps. Um, that's why we started a new series called Opt Out Tuesday. So once a week, we tell you a new people search site. We walk you through every step, screenshots, everything you need 
Uh, we send that out in our News of the Day newsletter, if you're not getting that already, commando.com slash subscribe. Or if you just go to the website and search Opt Out Tuesday, you'll get the previous six that we've done. And I definitely recommend you go through and do all those. And you know what? You do give a great steps when you post these up, Al. You do a fabulous job because, they, you know, as you mentioned, it's hard to figure out how to mm-hmm. opt out. I mean, they're not going to make it easy. So instead of, you know, you guys and gals sitting there on the website, you know, trying to read the terms and conditions or the FAQs or whatever <laughs> it may be, going into 10 different loops, because yeah. I mean, they, they do not want you to remove your data. No. Because then they're going to lose money, right? Exactly. And so they don't make it easy. Yeah. I have to end with a few more of these laws because I looked them up and they're really <laughs> worth sharing. The craziest ones are all state laws, not federal. Uh, in Florida, for example, it is illegal to sing in public while wearing a swimsuit. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Oh, no. <laughs> I, better, I better cancel my summer trip. <laughs> yeah. Right? What happens on spring break? I think that is what spring break is. Yeah. In Alabama, it's against the law to wear a fake mustache to church with the purpose of making someone laugh. What, what if you're, you're doing it for a different purpose? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Is, is it like okay if you have a, then? Yes. a really serious fake mustache? Yeah. I don't know. And then finally, a tech law for good measure. I did not know this. In Tennessee, it's illegal to share your passwords. Is it really? Oh. It is. Wow. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. Fascinating. That's good. You know, and speaking of privacy, I saw this online. I'm going to share it with you. Okay. So how the different companies talk about privacy. So Google says, we really value your privacy. Twitter says, we're never going to collect anything about you. (laughs) Apple says, we securely encrypt everything on each and every one of your devices. But meanwhile, Facebook says, we're going to give you an ad for something that you dreamt about. (laughs) (laughs) So true. Hey, listen, you want to stay right where you are, because coming up, we have the best DVRs for cord cutters. Uh, We're going to talk about how to make your smart assistant really smart and understand you better. And it's Matt's turn at the jokes this week. Matt, is it a I good, good one? I got a good one. I believe it's a really good one. Is I don't want to hype it up too much, but it's, it's all right. Scale of one to ten, Matt. One being like uh, not funny. Say a seven. A say solid a seven. seven. Okay, seven. all right. Okay, so yeah. we have a we have a joke that's not a ten, but it's a solid <laughs> seven coming up here on Tech Refresh. Since our founding in 2000, we at the Center for Internet Security have always had one mission. It's to create confidence in the connected world for people, businesses, and governments. As a nonprofit, we do this by drawing upon our core competencies of collaboration and innovation. The world is changing, cyber threats are evolving, and IT resources are limited. All you want is a way to strengthen your cybersecurity programs efficiently and effectively. Let CIS help you with these efforts. We use a consensus-based process involving IT professionals from around the world to develop and maintain security best practices. These resources are proven to defend systems and data against threats, both on premises and in the cloud. We also strive to help organizations of every size and maturity strengthen their cybersecurity programs. This includes serving U.S. state, local, tribal, and territorial government organizations. At CIS, we're all about making the connected world a safer place. Visit our website to learn more. Hey, welcome to Tech Refresh. It's your weekly fun podcast about everything digital. And just a quick reminder that if you're not already getting our newsletters, what are you waiting for? They're free, they're knowledge-packed, and you're going to love them. And head over to commando.com slash subscribe. Once again, that's commando.com slash subscribe. All right, so from time to time, we give out the email address here on the show, podcasts at commando.com. And again, if you ever want to drop us a note. So we heard from, let's see, Robert Bowenkamp in Sun City, West Arizona. Okay. Hi, Robert. Hi, Robert. Robert says, not a question, but he has a suggestion regarding cord cutting. He said, you seem to receive so many questions about it, and I think your answers often leave people hanging. Okay, fair enough. I cut the cord two years ago. And I purchased an OTA DVR from Tableau. Uses my router for signal distribution to my home, all my TVs. If you haven't looked at it, I suggest you have someone on your staff check it out. Okay. By the way, I listen to your podcast daily on my two-mile walk, and I really enjoy that. Oh, oh you know, Robert sounds like Robert. a nice guy. So yeah. let's let's talk about that. That uh, Tableau DVR is actually really dang good. It's about $160. You can find it on sale on Amazon. But you have to start thinking about it when you've cut the cable. How do you record your shows without that cable-provided DVR? And that's what Robert's talking about. Now, there are several companies that make a DVR to record programming. But the big question is, is how many TVs are you going to record from where you'd like to see that program at? 
Uh, how many hours of programming can you also store on that DVR? And then also, don't forget, you're going to need, what, an outdoor antenna mm-hmm. to pick all those up as well. So probably the simplest one is from Amazon. It's called the Amazon Fire Recast, and it can record up to two shows at once, and it stores 75 solid hours of programming. Okay. That's, That's a lot. lot. <laughs> it is. I mean, because you're thinking, if you're going to record something, mm-hmm. you're going to watch it and then delete it, right? I mean, yeah. Unless it's unless you're recording a video of us, and then yeah. you're going to want to save that Keep forever, it forever and ever. ever. And ever. Uh, anyway, that fire from Amazon is about 150 bucks. Now, if you're a TV and sports fan, you want to record a lot. You can't beat the TiVo Edge. You can schedule and record up to four shows at once and store up to 300 HD oh, hours. Wow. Okay. But then you have an app, so you can watch whatever you recorded on your phone or on your tablet, too. So that's really handy. And 4K. It's expensive. It's 600 bucks. Oof. I know. <laughs> maybe, pay, maybe paying for cable just wasn't that bad <laughs> after all. Uh, so, Robert, thank you for your kind note, and we're glad that you're listening to us on a two-mile walk. You see, but that's perfect, right? I yeah. mean, each tech refresh, you know, it's – and Kim Commando Day, it's about 30 minutes. Perfect. You get in a solid walk, and you're laughing and gaining intel and know-how at the same time. <laughs> all right, Matt, you're up next with a tip to amaze us. Yes, Having two monitors has become the norm, but not everybody has two monitors. And sometimes you still want to be able to have that same feeling of having two monitors, you know, but with just the one. So I discovered this really cool trick, and it works for both Windows and Mac a little bit differently, but I'll explain how it works. On Windows, if you want to set up two different browser screens on the same one monitor, you're just going to press that Windows key and either the left or the right arrow, and it's going to snap that screen over to the left or the right side. You can then grab another browser tab, and do the exact same thing for the right side, then it looks like you just have two screens. It's almost easier on Macs, though, because Macs have it built in as a function where all I have to do is scroll to the left or the right side corner, and a little transparent box will open up, and it snaps right over to that side. I use this all the time. If you didn't know, all those wonderful, amazing commando newsletters that you get, I build what? those on a daily basis. Yes? yes. Oh. So I have to have multiple tabs open at the same time, and I only use one monitor. So... Having that feature allows me to have all the different things. Now, my mom uses this all the time. In the mornings, what she does is she has her laptop and she snaps the Arizona Republic, the newspaper, on one side. And then she (laughs) will usually FaceTime with my sister or me on the other side. So she has both of those things open at once. You can also say you want to wake up and do the today's Wordle while watching your favorite YouTube series. You can snap one to either side and there you go. So give that one a try. It's, It's amazing. And so where do they what's it called on Windows again? It is called on Windows it doesn't have a name. It's just called like screen sharing. So oh, that's you're just it. Okay. Put, that's it. And it's screen snapping on on Macs. So Got it's it. just putting it in the corner. You know, and having two monitors is so awesome. Oh yeah. It's so <laughs> wonderful. How many monitors do you have, Al? I used to. I have um one set up normal and then the other I actually do vertically. And Oh, do you? Yeah, I find that pretty okay. handy. I keep um we have Google products for work. And so I keep my Google chat kind of in the corner of the vertical and then the top uh, for things, you know, that I'm not interacting with all the time, but I just want up there. It does make a lot of sense to do that. All right. So Allie, smart assistants. Are you Siri, Russ? I'm (laughs) serious, unfortunately. I was researching Google Assistant for a tip for the website. And I scrolled down to that section in Google where it's the questions that people also ask. Uh, Results included, how do I get Google Assistant to understand? How do I get Google Assistant to hear me better? And my personal favorite, how do I turn this effing Google Assistant off? (laughs) That's an actual result. I'm not kidding. Somebody actually wrote that in a search A lot of people must have. That's true. (laughs) Well, I'm going to set that one aside for now and talk about how to get your smart assistant, Surrey, Alexa, Google, whatever you use, to hear you better. Okay, number one, stop yelling. Um, and maybe you're fed up because Alexa just won't listen, or maybe you're just a loud person, but smart assistants do better when you talk at just a normal conversational tone. Um, it doesn't get as garbled. So use your inside voice. Number two, don't talk like a robot. This is kind of like what we were talking about with search results, Kim. So your smart assistant is actually really trained. The AI wants to pick up normal human speech patterns. And so if you say to Surrey, what's the weather, you're going to get a better answer then maybe confusing her if you say temperature Phoenix now, you know, something really robotic. So talk like a normal person. And number three, 
take a pause. This is one that always trips me up. I might yell, you know, Alexa, turn off the lights. And I've already said the whole command, but the speaker hasn't registered yet that I have said anything or turned it on. And so then I have to do the whole thing over again. So the fix for this one is easy. Just take a beat after you say that wake word and make sure that it's actually listening. And there you, know, you have it. That, no, that's those are really great tips. I have to tell you what I did to Barry the other night because, you know, I'm <laughs> oh, a no. bit of a prankster. <laughs> <laughs> So he had, we had some friends over, and he was showing them about how the Amazon Echo speaker works. Mm-hmm. Okay. And and then he got into the music, and then he would say things like, you know, play Motown or the Supremes or whoever it was, you know, something from the 50s or 60s. And so I, meanwhile, I was around the corner with the Alexa app. <laughs> of so, course. Okay. So he would say, like, you know, play uh, Jim Croce. Mm-hmm. And then I would put on like Travis Scott, <laughs> and 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 he'd be like, and then I hear him going like, "Oh God, Daryl!" <laughs> and come he's come like, out. "Yeah, he's like, you know, this thing does work. I'm gonna show you." Okay, then he's like, "Okay, play Moon River." Because he said Moon River, and then yeah. I put on like Dolly Parton. <laughs> okay. you know, working nine to five. Okay. And then he's then he's getting even more frustrated. And our friends are like looking at him like going, I don't think this thing really works. Yeah. And he's like, okay, well, I'm going to try one more time. Okay. So he's, he's like, you know, how about, um, I think it was Christopher Cross, you know, mm-hmm. sailing or something like that. And then I put on like Mariah Carey, <laughs> you know, and then I couldn't hold it in anymore. <laughs> Because then I just busted out laughing. <laughs> and then and then all of a sudden I hear, God damn it, Kim. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised it took him that long to figure it out. I know. You think yeah. he'd know better. I mean, because you know, he already knows, like, if he says, well, he did demonstrate this to the fr- to our friends. Because he said, here, look, what, listen to what the, she says. Alexa says when I say, what's the weather in Santa Barbara? And, mm-hmm. she, and I have it programmed where she says, Look out the window. The house is made of glass. Can't you <laughs> see what the weather is? Yes. Oh, poor All right, Barry. stay right where you are. Yes, poor Barry. Uh, Allie has a crazy crypto real estate story to share, and Matt's going to tell us what the Internet's talking about. And, of course, we have our weekly trivia question you don't want to miss, too. How'd you like to hear about how I saved $456 in just five minutes? I used an app called Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Can you remember all the free trials and all the other random subscriptions that you've signed up for? Of course you don't, and that's what they're banking on. I love that with Rocket Money, I can see all of my subscriptions in one place. Then if I see something I don't want, I just tap to cancel, and I never have to get on the phone with customer service. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year, with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things that you just don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash Kim. That's rocketmoney.com slash Kim. Rocketmoney.com slash Kim. Hey, welcome back to Tech Refresh. Just a quick reminder to make sure that you rate, you review, you subscribe, you follow our podcast, because this way we get a heck of a lot more listeners. And I recently saw a house for sale in Beverly Hills. Okay, let me tell you about me and real estate. Okay, and it's really kind of strange is that if you're driving around Beverly Hills on a Saturday or Sunday, they have open houses. Okay, and I'm not talking about like million dollar open houses, $2 million open houses. I'm talking about like $27 million homes with an open house. Okay. And of course, we walk in like we own the joint. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. And then there was one house that we stopped in a su- couple of Sundays ago. It was, it was uh, five bedrooms, seven bath. It has a mm-hmm. pool, two-car garage. It's in Beverly Hills. So it's $19.5 million. Okay. But included with it was an exact replica of the house, that you could have in the metaverse <laughs> day for an additional $100,000. Uh, At that deal? point, yeah, what a what's 100000 bucks? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, we might as well just get the metaverse house, <laughs> too. I mean, does the furniture include it? I don't know. <laughs> but we want the metaverse house. No, those are special NFTs you have yes, to buy. Of yes, yeah. it was a very mm-hmm. special NFT for 100000 mm-hmm. And I asked the realtor, 
uh, and I just say, you know, hey, listen, you know, is anybody really interested in it? He said, you know what? You'd be surprised how many people are interested in adding the NFT version, which <laughs> reminds me of your real estate story you were sharing with us, Allie. Yes, indeed. Real estate is actually becoming a pretty neat use case for the blockchain, NFTs, crypto, all that stuff. Um, most of us want, you know, a tangible physical piece of property if we're going to spend a bunch of money, right? Not just some virtual plot of land floating around in the ether. Well, an office building in New York was put up for sale. It was on Zillow in regular dollars, of course, and then on the NFT platform OpenSea for around $29 million in Ether, the Ethereum coin. Uh, if you buy it on OpenSea, you get an NFT that gives you the exclusive rights to buy the building. Now, here's the funny part. The initial listing was for 15,000 ETH, which at the time was about 20, 29 million. But then the price of ETH started falling, and within two weeks, the, the value was at about 40% of what they had initially listed it for. Luckily for them, nobody bought it during this time, and then they, you know, put the listing price back up. But aside from that mess, what really caught my attention about this, the guy selling it, his name is Chris Okada, or sorry, he talked to Fortune, and he said, you know, there are all these people that made a ton of money in crypto, and yes, people have lost a lot of money, but believe me, those crypto millionaires and billionaires are still out there. They're just not quite as rich. And he said, this is a way that, you know, if they have all this money, they can actually do things with it and buy something without having to transfer all that money into, you know, regular yeah, fiat currency. True. Yes. Well, the building is on 24th Street in Chelsea in Manhattan, hence the $29 million. And again, the NFT itself is not the actual deed. Just think about how badly that could go, right? You know, we hear these stories all the time of people falling for phishing scams, doing the wrong price on a listing, and in this case, that would be a disaster. Um, it's not just fancy office buildings in New York. You can buy a regular house as an NFT, too. Um, there's a blockchain real estate company called Proppy. You browse just like, you know, Zillow or Redfin, but some houses you can pay in crypto. You can buy it as an NFT, the process there is a little bit different, but they are selling homes. Now, I'm not going to say buying real estate this way is completely ready for prime time. You still have to get the title by traditional means. You know, it's not just all one click and you're done. But Proppy says you don't need to wait the 30 days closing if you buy a property. That's cool. And you probably will save a lot of time, you know, having to wire money over, uh, you know, if you just do it through cryptocurrency instead of waiting for that wire time. So we'll see. I think it could be a pretty neat uh Part of the blockchain. It doesn't take that long to wire money. I wire money all the time. It's like a, it's like twenty four hours. Oh, okay, that's not too bad. So yeah, it's, you know, I was I, thinking back. I remember when we bought our house. You know that all the time for a lot of this stuff, like the documents, the closing. That's true. The that's money true. waiting you know for what? it all You're to right. go through. You're right. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it, there's just so many different forms, uh, and you just I don't know if you. I mean, I just sign them. I'm like, I don't even know where to sign. <laughs> yeah. them, so just go ahead and sign them. I mean, it's just yeah. kind of crazy. Uh, that was really interesting, Al. Um, all right. So, Matt, what is the Internet talking about? The Internet was in a uproar this last week, and I find the story fascinating and a, a little bit annoying. <laughs> it's a 60-year-old drama that came back into light. Recently, at the Met Gala, Kim Kardashian, the other Kim K. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I know. You know, let me tell you something. It is so annoying. When I'm writing something in Google and I'm like, Kim, mm -hmm. I, and I put a K and wants to finish Kardashian. I'm like, of hello. Course, yeah. Yes. Anyway. Like, how dare you? <laughs> so she wore a dress from the 60s that was worn by Marilyn Monroe to the event where she sang Happy Birthday, Mr. President, to then President John F. Kennedy wearing this dazzling silver dress. It is a beautiful it is. dress. It is. So Kim Kardashian was able to get her hands on it and was able to wear it to the Met Gala. Well, the internet spotted this and then started doing a whole bunch of internet sleuths and all over TikTok and, and, and Reddit and stuff. And they ended up finding little tears in the dress oh. that they believe was created from her wearing it. Now, the owner of the dress, which is Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum, which I thought kind of was interesting in the first place, came out and they responded with saying, no, there was no damage to the dress. It's fine. She didn't do any damage to the dress. Then Kim Kardashian herself came out just recently and said, no, I only wore the dress for three or four minutes. Apparently she showed up in the limo in slippers and like a t-shirt, quickly changed into this dress with guys wearing gloves to get her into this dress. Oh. She walked to the red carpet with her boyfriend, Pete Davidson. And then when they got to the top of the stairs, those same guys came back over with these protective gloves and took it off of her. So she only wore it for that like three it? or four minutes. That's it. That's oh all she wore. Oh my God. You know what? I find it annoying having to put on makeup. I mean, right. 
she changed into one of the most valuable dresses in the entire world for three minutes. Yeah, so the internet's still really mad at her for it, but I, I don't know. There's, there, it's all the time. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I mean, she looks stunning in the dress. She did look amazing. She really did. And and then I, I read recently where she lost like 21 pounds. I saw that too right. to fit into it, yeah. To yeah. fit into that dress. And at the time, everybody was saying how how big Marilyn Monroe was, when in retrospect, she really wasn't. No, big. I mean. I mean, Kim, Kim's big from the back. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, know. maybe Marilyn had more uh, more there than we remember. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, here, so I have a joke for you. Uh, what's the difference between an ancient Egyptian prince and a Kardashian? Mm. Anybody? The Egyptian knew from the start that his daddy would become a mummy. <laughs> oh, 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 I, I thought it was going to be something about wearing too much eyeliner or something like that. You know? <laughs> I know. My brother-in-law, Bill, he still can't get over that Bruce Jenner is no yeah. longer Bruce Jenner. I mean, he says, so every once in a while, if I'm like at the supermarket, the rare, rare time that I actually go, and there's like the National Enquirer with, you know, Chris Jenner now on the cover, mm -hmm. is I, I actually buy it and I mail it to him. <laughs> <laughs> so just kind of, you know, bust his chops just a little bit. All right, still to come, we have um, our trivia that you don't want to miss. And then Matt, are you still thinking it's a solid seven on that joke? You know what, I have it over here and I've been thinking about it. I think it's more like an eight. <gasps> oh, oh yeah. okay, well, it's a, it's a solid eight. So you want to stay right where you are. <laughs> How'd you like to hear about how I saved $456 in just five minutes? I used an app called Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Can you remember all the free trials and all the other random subscriptions that you've signed up for? Of course you don't, and that's what they're banking on. I love that with Rocket Money, I can see all of my subscriptions in one place. Then if I see something I don't want, I just tap to cancel and I never have to get on the phone with customer service. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things that you just don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash Kim. That's rocketmoney.com slash Kim. Rocketmoney.com slash Kim. Hey, welcome to Tech Refresh. You know, it's your really fun podcast about everything digital. And just a quick reminder, if you're not already getting our newsletters, yes, go to commando.com slash subscribe and sign up for the breaking news, our tips. And we also have newsletters that are just for Android and just for Windows users and just for Apple users. So make sure that you do that because you're going to learn something new every single day. I guarantee you. That's commando.com slash subscribe. All right, Allie, when you do trivia, it's always tough. I'm going to tell you. It's always a hard one. This is a fun one. We'll see. Okay. We'll see what happens. Okay. So before we all had cell phones in our pockets, millions of people had pagers. Yes. Oh, yes. Pagers, beepers, whatever you want to call them. Uh, the technology actually dates back to the 1920s, but they really hit their peak in the 90s. At one point, in 1994, there were 61 million people using pagers. Oh, wow. Today, the vast majority of hospitals still rely on pagers. They do. If you've ever tried to use your cell phone in a hospital, you know that the reception is generally pretty awful. Um, and because pagers use high-frequency radio waves, they don't have the same problem. So doctors, staff, they can still easily communicate. Aside from doctors, there are a lot of other groups that use pagers still to this day. Which one of these does not? Okay. So okay. three answers. Three of these groups do use pagers. One does not. Okay. A, nuclear engineers. Hmm. B, bird watchers. C, archaeologists. And D, lifeboat crews. Oh, I see. I tell you, <laughs> this is yeah. always a tough one because, like, you know, it's like the outlier lifeboat crew. I mean, you know, you'd be like, oh, you know, who would ever think of anything like that? Who would? I, you know, I'm going to, oh, I, <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with archaeologists okay. that don't use pagers, only because, like, they're digging around dead things. And <laughs> people that have been gone, like, I mean, the Daily Mail, I don't know what it is, but every day they seem to have, like, 
some new person that was found yeah. in a in a peat moss thing or whatever. They love those, yeah. <laughs> I know. It's like, and I actually am fascinated with, you know, how they really just look like us. <laughs> when they when they do it, it's like, you know, they you would see that person walking around the streets today. So anyway, I'm going to go with archaeologists. How about okay. you, Matt? One of my best friends is actually a nuclear engineer. So I'm 90% sure it's not that. Um, I'm not going to go with archaeology because she went with it. I want to be different. And I have no idea what a lifeboat cruise is. So I'm going <laughs> to go with bird, bird watching. watching. <laughs> All right. One of you is right. And it's Kim. <gasps> Good job, Kim. Oh, yes. It is not archaeologists. I just made that up. So nuclear engineers, they actually do rely on pagers because they can really easily send a bunch of messages, especially if there's a big disaster in a nuclear power plant, right? Um, most of those places, the walls are really thick concrete, so cell signal oh, can't really transfer. Okay, that's smart. Bird watchers, yes, they're often in the middle of nowhere, so they might not have good service, and you don't want to miss a bird. You need a quick message. Um, and then lifeboat crews. So any kind of, you know, rescue, uh, a lot of rescue operation things, they use pagers because you can get service anywhere. Yeah. See, so now you know what a lifeboat crew now is. I now I know. See? Now you know. <laughs> oh, well, you know, coming off of a loss like this, I know it's going to be hard for you. <laughs> okay. I know. It sucks all the funny right it out of you. Does. And so, I won Pictionary yesterday, so I feel okay. <laughs> oh, my God. You just, you knocked it out of the ballpark. You killed no. it yesterday. I mean, oh, what would you yeah. get, like 1,000? Yeah, over 1,000. Not yes. bragging or anything. I mean, <laughs> that was it. But you were, but, you know, Charles with the dinosaur. Yeah. That was good. And, you know, and then, of course, I had to draw an angry person. <laughs> <laughs> For everyone wondering what the heck we're talking about, we played Company Pictionary yesterday. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's right. It's a lot of fun. So I had to draw the angry person. And so I tried to draw an angry person, like, you know, with a bad mouth and, like, looking mean. <laughs> and then I just wrote the word Karen above it, and everybody laughed and got it. <laughs> we all so, got it. You did. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So, all right, we're ready for you. Here's our drum roll, Matt. Solid eight. <laughs> I usually do the shorter jokes, if you remember, but I, I specifically seeked out a longer one to, to, to see how I can do it. Right. Okay. One day, Einstein has to speak in an important science conference. On the way there, he tells his driver, who looks a lot like him, I'm sick of all these conferences. I always say the same thing over and over. The driver agrees. You're right. As your driver, I attended all of them, and even though I don't know anything about science, I could give your conference in your place. Well, that's a great idea, says Einstein. Let's switch places then. So they switch clothes, and as they arrive, the driver dressed as Einstein goes on stage and starts giving the usual speech while the real Einstein dressed as the car driver attends it. But in the crowd, there is one scientist who wants to impress everyone and thinks of a very difficult question to ask Einstein, mm. hoping he wouldn't be able to respond. So this guy stands up and interrupts the conference by posing very a very difficult question, and the whole room goes silent, holding their breath, waiting for the response. The driver looks at him dead in the eyes and says, Sir, your question is so easy to answer that I'm going to let my driver reply to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. That was good. That was good. That was, I'm going to give it a solid eight, though. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I'm going to keep I, it at a seven? I, I, think, I, I think a seven. I think okay, I'll seven. take a seven. Think a, a seven. A, a seven. Think a seven's room yeah. to grow. Yeah. So, I mean, think about this. Not everybody can be excellent at everything. Like me. No. Sorry. No. Yeah, kidding. No. kidding. <laughs> All right. So, hey, listen. So, we're at the end of Tech Refresh. This is when we ask you, we beg you to rate, review, and subscribe. And uh, make sure that you have any questions, any comments, you can always send them to podcasts at commando.com. And, Allie, any parting words? Leave us a nice review. It really does help other people find us. And, you know, I love that letter we got. Maybe take us on your next yes, walk. Yes, exactly. Inspired me to get some more steps yes, in. Yes, always get more steps. And how about you, Matt? You know, uh, I mentioned earlier that I build all those amazing newsletters. If you are not getting the news tip or the current, please go to commando.com slash subscribe and pick the ones that you think would work best for you. And you're going to love them. And we'll see you again here next week. 